Hi friends, I'm practicing painting living creatures again today, and I want to tell you why you should draw dogs. And by draw, I mean paint, sketch, finger paint, whatever you like to do. So why should you draw dogs? Number one, they are awesome. They're cute, hilarious, really interactive, and they help your brain keep releasing happy chemicals. After I found out that I have multiple sclerosis, I was depressed for a long time. One of the main ways that I dug out of that hole was by volunteering to walk dogs at a shelter. Dogs are so happy, and they're really good at showing appreciation. So the more time I spent with dogs, the more my mood stabilized, and eventually I spent so much time volunteering that the shelter workers finally convinced me to get a job there. Now that I've moved overseas, I foster dogs in Tokyo. I keep them safe and healthy until they can find forever homes, and I help them trust new people while they help my brain keep releasing those happy chemicals. And while painting dogs doesn't have quite the same effect as petting them or playing with them, it does still make me happy. Oxytocin is a wonderful thing. Reason number two why you should draw dogs, there are so many reference photos online. I mean, who doesn't like taking pictures of their dogs? Just look at all the doggy celebrities on Instagram. There are millions of cute dogs to sketch. Just make sure that you give credit to the person who took the photo and don't go trying to sell a painting of somebody else's dog photo if you didn't get permission first. Reason number three, it's less scary than drawing people, especially if you still feel like a beginner at drawing faces. Making mistakes on a human face makes them look crazy. Making mistakes on a dog face just makes them look a little bit weird and sometimes even extra cute. So by drawing dogs, you can still build confidence in your art without such a high risk of hating yourself when you make mistakes with proportion and perspective. Reason number four, they have very expressive faces. And I think this is the best reason to practice drawing dogs. It's fairly easy to make plants and nature look good, but faces are difficult and not very forgiving, so you have to practice. Now, lots of animals, like bunnies and hamsters and ferrets, they have faces that aren't very expressive. You have to pay more attention to their body language. And cats are a little bit more expressive, but still, it's mostly just with their bodies or maybe in their eyes. Dogs don't have as many expressions as humans for sure, but they definitely do have a range. So, what did I learn from painting this dog? As humans, we're perfectly wired to recognize faces, so much that even tiny mistakes in painting those faces can make them look really strange and disfigured, especially if you know the person, or in this case, the dog. I think my biggest flaw in making this painting comes from just that. I don't know this dog. I know that his name is Puppy, and I'm friends with Puppy's dad, but I've never met Puppy. So when I was making the pencil sketch at the beginning of the video, I didn't notice that his face was out of proportion. But in the three months between starting and finishing this piece, since I follow Puppy on Instagram, I started paying more attention to his facial features and his expressions. And I've seen little videos that show what his personality is like, so now it's much easier to see where I went wrong. And I mean, that is why artists do studies, right? <laughs> so that they can see better. Some of the old masters visited their subjects over and over to do sketch after sketch, and often several small paintings as well before they created their final masterpieces. Can the modern masters achieve the same thing by simply following their subjects on Instagram? I have seen some pretty solid pop idol fan art accounts. But back to the subject. Overall, I do think his little body came out just right. And the face in the painting is really cute and sweet, but it's not quite puppy. His little snoot should be longer and his eyes should be smaller. You can see toward the end that I noticed the proportions were off and I tried to make the eyes farther apart and the nose bigger for perspective. And it helped a little bit, but since it was a practice piece, I didn't feel like doing the work to try to move and reshape the entire head. So it was good practice and it taught me to be more attentive to facial features during the sketching phase because trying to change the basic structure after I start painting is so time consuming and frustrating. And really it's one of those annoying little triggers that makes me want to quit painting for a long time. <laughs> and I definitely don't want to go through that again. But now you might be wondering, why should I practice dogs if I'm not interested in making my art about dogs? And that brings me to reason number five why you should practice drawing dogs. But really this applies to any still life or reference photo. And that reason is that it will help you see. Spending time trying to depict the reality of any object or scene helps you understand what it is that you find interesting in general about subjects or lighting or compositions. It helps you understand where you like to show reality and where you like to add in little white lies here and there to help make your art more interesting. Feel free to ask me any questions, make suggestions, or even tag me on Instagram to use your dog as my next practice subject. Thanks for watching.